I am not the professional. I do not, I'm not the end and all. I'm not the of this. I'm not. And I want to learn as well as other parents and other people watching about, you know, kids with autism and all that. I know my unique experience. I don't know everybody's experience. But we're going to get into some real conversation with these parents. And, uh, and then for everybody else who's watching, who maybe have an autistic family member, who, who maybe don't, and just wants to be educated and wants to learn about uh, inclusion. You know, uh, my first guest, she says, uh, different, not less on her, on her hashtag. And... You know, I've been following her for a while because I see that she represents, she has two kids that are autistic and she does stuff in her community, I believe it's Baltimore and and I like what she does. So, you know, I invited her. I invited uh, One Blue Heart, uh, which is Steffi from uh, New York. We know her, she does a lot for the community, for her son. And then last but not least, Puzzle Life, who's, uh, in the spectrum, got kids too, and is very vocal about it, very active about it, because it's different levels, you know. Even if you see a kid that's autistic and he's cute and cuddly as a kid, he or she, they grow up to be adults. So this is a lifetime responsibility, not just for the kid, but for the family as well. So everybody, if you truly love your family member, you're all in on this. You're all invested on this. Um, and so, let me, uh, let me see if she's ready. I'm, I know she's ready. Hold up. There she goes. She ready. There she go. That boy Rich Rich the barber and Rich the player. And so I hope you're excited like me for tonight's show. Uh, Cause I never see it. And I'm not just saying it because we do it, but I never see it. You know, so this is this is gonna be one. And I hope my girl don't chicken out because I told her 815, because I usually talk a lot. And I don't have much good to say other than what we're talking about with this autism awareness as far as like, you know, I've been trying, I've been praying hard for DMX. I've been trying so much not to uh, bring my spirits down or to get depressed or, you know, really go there with that. And I've just been praying for a miracle. And I know God is a supernatural God. I know God can heal anything. I know he could make miracles happen. And uh, DMX, although he's had his troubles and we all, uh, you know, we all heard this, you know, but he always prayed for us. So, you know, please pray for that, brother. Please pray for him. Hey. How are you? It sounds loud, but what's going on? <laughs> Let me see if I can move. Nothing, how are you? Well, you know you're on prime time right now. You got to be ready, you know. <laughs> you got to, this prime time. <laughs> um, tell the people your name, where you from? So, Sharona, I started Blues Brothers here in Washington, D.C., Okay, and you have two sons. Are they twins? Yes, twins, Seth and Cyrus. They're Seth and Cyrus, and, and, and they're both autistic. autistic. And nonverbal, just like Joey. Yeah. Just like Joey. And so both of them are nonverbal. Right. Yep, both of them. And so let me ask you, you know, I want this to be real because I want people to learn and people, you know, because I like to talk about stuff people ain't really going to talk about. But... How old were you, and did you know while, while you were pregnant that they were going to uh, be born autistic? Did the doctor tell you that? 
or when they when, when they were born, you heard they were going to be autistic? No, actually, they were born one month early. I was probably 13 when I had them. And um, they were normal until about maybe one year old. I know they, were, they weren't talking. They eye contact with me. And we took them to the doctors, and the doctors told us they were deaf. They couldn't hear. Oh. And we saw them dancing to music. So I'm like, no, they can hear. It's something else going on. So after more, um, taking them to different doctors, evaluated, we realized that they were on the spectrum. Because if yeah. you look at my boys, they look normal. Like you wouldn't see any signs of anything being wrong with them until you see that they And so you hear this. So, so how old were you when you had them? I was 31. So you hear this, right? You was older than me. I was, I was only 18, 19. You hear this, and they tell you, and you realize they're on the spectrum. Uh, what was that feeling like? It crushed me. It crushed me. And my husband didn't understand at the time. He, he was, in his mind, he was like, no, my kids are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. And everybody around us kept telling us, no, there's nothing wrong with them. It crushed me because I knew. I could see the signs, and I knew that something wasn't right. And I, I heard of autism, but I didn't know what it was. So I was really confused. And I just started asking questions and trying to figure things out. And I just was like at a standstill because my community didn't offer anything. And no one could tell me anything. There's no cure. There, there, there it comes from. So I'm just, you know, puzzled as to what's going on. So having twins on the spectrum it has shown me where the greatest need is. So I decided to either, I said to myself, I either have to stand up and make a change and be the change that, and do the things that I'm asking other people to do, or I can just move somewhere where they have more services. So I started at Blues Brothers Therapeutic Places, and I actually just bought a trailer, and um, I'm trying to provide families with services and resources in the Therapeutic bounce, sensory swing, um, types of you know therapeutic services that the for our children. Um, what's it like for your husband? How did he take it? it How did he take it? It took him a long time to accept it. For a long time, he would say, "Ain't nothing wrong with them. They're gonna be okay." Nothing wrong with them, and then he just had a breakdown and was like, "Yeah." They're, they're definitely autistic, you know. He'll never hear them say daddy. I'll never hear them say mom. You know, they can't tell us to hurt. They can't tell us when something. They can show us different things. Most of the time we're guessing to figure out what's going on with them. Um, they're learning. You know, that's, that's, that's a problem we have with Joey. And so we watch him 24 hours a day because he can't tell us when he's hurt. Or if someone's hurting them, or so you gotta you gotta know. And 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 and, and for years, that's been the problem. So you you and your husband still together, right? Yes. And we have Man, that's a, children. It's a beautiful thing because, you know, when my experience, one of the parents leaves. Like, you know, it's it's often like that. Unfortunately, somebody gives up or somebody. Because, you know, having autistic kids put a different type of pressure on you where you got to watch everything, you got to do everything. It's not so, more, so much more about you anymore. It's about these kids and the special needs they have. And I'm glad that you guys, you know, are, are loving and still together. Um, and uh, with family members... Uh, do you get support with the rest of the family, like aunts, cousins, uncles, and stuff like that? So no, I don't. I don't have a mother, a father, no aunts and uncles. I don't have any of that. I'm Philly and to DC, and I'm actually here by myself, with a bunch of good girlfriends and stuff like that. But um, I have an older daughter, one, and I have an older son that's 18, and they step like big time. Wow. They've missed a lot of 
of stuff because we couldn't go because of the boys. And I actually, I got to send you my book. You know, I wrote a book. And in my book, there's actually- so, 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 so let's stay right there because that's a big thing, right? Um, you couldn't go because of the boys. Right. I've been told, and my mother's been told, we've been invited to family functions where they say, please don't bring Joey. Like, for real. Like, we, 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 shit, you know, shit like that happens because some people are either scared or they don't understand or they think maybe he's going to flip out loud music. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Have you ever, uh, has that ever happened to you? So we went on a Disney cruise and the twins broke the Disney, the TV that was in the fun room. I don't know why and how, but they broke it. And it was like the size of a wall. And so they break TV, they break windows. They've broken three for the last month. So uh, yeah, a lot of people, my friends of course are encouraged boys, but when we bring them, it's like, you know, we gotta really watch them because they break stuff. They stuff, the noise sets them off. Maybe somebody in the house may set them off. We don't like taking them places because of that. And there's a brother I'm going to speak to later, Puzzle Life. And I want to save the more questions, the more serious question of like once they're grown, because he has a perspective on it with like how the cops would deal with them. Like, so, you know, you know, kids on the spectrum become young adults. They might bug out because they ain't got their medicine or they bug out because a light flash or, they, or right. something might tick them off. And for Joey, um, damn, we being really real on this thing right here, right? Um, for Joey one time, he was catching seizures, right? Mm -hmm. So they kept changing his medicine. And one day he just flipped out and just fucked shit up in the crib and was chasing my father, chasing him. And then he wilded out. So my mother and father had to call the ambulance. And in Florida, is almost like legally that they got a Baker Act up. Like they got to put him in the spot. And Joey never been alone his whole life. And so, you know, sometimes these kids don't know no better and they might flip out. But immediately if the wrong police officer comes or the wrong, you know, they might take it a different way. And um, and so that's that's very scary too. So he was there for two days and, you know, we were there from six in the morning to 10 at night till they just get, they were like, man, these people want this kid. Like, you know, we need them. And, um, and, and so th that happened on your birthday. Uh, as he said, it happened on our birthday. That was the saddest shit in the world. Cause Joey never been alone at one minute of his life. So when they went, when he went in there, we had to like, we was going crazy. We, yeah, I don't know how to explain it to you. Like, we was losing our mind. But this type of shit happens. Like, these kids, the special kids, something might tick them off. And, you know, they do something. And if the loving person ain't there to protect them, then there could be more of a problem. You know, Joe, my sister in California started a cannabis line called Just Cannabis. And she sells an oil for autistic children and adults that helps with those meltdowns. I'm gonna have to send you some. It's really, it will, it will help a lot. Like you rub it on him in the morning, you rub it at night, and it helps with the meltdowns. It keeps him calm. Yeah. You know, Joey's a dawn now. Joey's, he's, he's older, he's mm -hmm. calm. When we have dinners, he looks at his, his sister and his brother like they little wood in him. He'll <laughs> sit there like he Joe Crack. And so he's all the way calm, thank God. Yeah. But when he was younger growing up, you know, Joey would flip. Right. And, you know, the guy or the lady that, that, that handles him, that takes care of him, he'll beat him up every now and then. And not beat him up, get mad at them and try to chase him. But, you know, and then they'll forget about that and get back to the normal Joey. But, uh, you know, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Especially, I don't want to say just the hood because this is a – Humanity thing. This ain't just black, Latino. It's right. humanity. Everybody deals with this. Everybody's going through a hard time with this. Um, 
I don't want to ask you all the questions because I got other guests, but uh, with my experience, once Joey, Joey's older now, so Joey graduated high school. Now, all his life till high school, great teachers, great places, uh, they were nice to him. They were, he had other kids he, he, he communicated with. You know, everything was good, birthday parties. But once they graduate from high school, when you go out there to look at the other facilities, they dirty. Mm -hmm. um, they don't really take care of them the same way. They don't. And, uh, and I think, you know, this is pretty much what, you, what you're talking about when you, when you have your own program to, like, give them a space where they're loved, it's clean. Thanks. And uh, so, so with, with Joey, you know, I learned that, you know, and unfortunately, he stays home most of the time now mm -hmm. and can't be around other people because we took him to everywhere they told us to take him, and the shit was dirty. Yeah. And, and, and I'm like, yo, he ain't going to be in here. He, 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 he ain't going to be hanging out in here. And so I think we need to really focus as a community on different programs and what happens after they graduate from high school. How do they get around people and kids that know them and love them and know how to deal with them that ain't in like a dirty facility? I guess I, guess I take it like they try to show love when they kids and then once they turn at a certain age, Out of it's there. like, yo, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, I have a good girlfriend, Sybil, and she actually has twin nonverbal autistic girls. And she started a foundation, Twin Green. And she hires autistic adults and children to come and do lawn care. And she teaches them the craft. And she's so patient and so loving because she has twins that are nonverbal. And her sister, I think, like 22, 23. And so she started an organization, a foundation where she hires autistic children and children and adults with disabilities and she gives them a job that's a beautiful thing yeah i know um i've been to a couple of places where i've seen some autistic uh people working and and, and i love it and um me being a parent of an autistic kid a special needs kid i could always spot them mm -hmm. right like yesterday i flew in we was in the bahamas and then it was a family that had a kid, and he was in the chair, and he might have been five, six, but I immediately I looked at him, I waved at him, I smiled at him, because it's almost like, I guess, we know. Yeah. You, you know? So, I, so, you know, I waved at the kid, was extra nice to the kid, and, and, and that's always me. Whenever I see an autistic person, kid, you know, working, you know what I mean? I, I show him extra love. You know, and, and you got to think about there's people out here that's perfectly fine and don't, don't want to work or don't know how to work. And imagine an autistic person working nine to five, you know, trying to do the right thing. Right. Yeah. Um, tell them about your program. How can they find you? Uh, you in D.C.? Because um, I had to get to some other guests. So um, it's Brothers, C P um, and I'm in DC. Two brothers, Lou, four brothers, TPC on Instagram. Reach out, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. God bless, Mama, man. Thank you for coming on here and sharing your story with us. Thank you for being my... No you know what I'm saying? It's real, it's love, it's life. You know, so we got to, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. All right, Mama, be good. Later. Bye-bye. Let's so see, you heard from the first guest, uh, you know... And so she decided to do something. She felt like there was an adequate uh, support in her community. And, uh, and so she went and she created programs herself. And so I'm going to bring a couple more parents on here so we can talk about it and, um, and see what their take is 
And you know, this is real shit, guys. This is uh this is our kids, this is our family, this is our community. Uh, and we gotta step up and we gotta be there for them. Hi, Joe. Steph, what's up? What's up? What's up? How are you? I'm so nervous to be on your live right now. No, nah, don't be nervous because, you know, I see you all the time with your son in the community dealing with other kids, not just your son. Yes. Right? And you, you are an advocate for it. And every time I see you, you talking to me like, yo, Joe, I got it. And then sometimes your dreams are like so big. I'm like, damn, yo, Steph, I ain't got thirty million dollars. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, don't like, scare people like that right now. Hey, I mean, no, no, I ain't scaring nobody like that. But I'm just saying, like, you know, you dream big, and there's I, nothing wrong with that. Um, tell us about your son. What What's his name? How old is he? All right, guys. So my name is Stephanie. I am the mom of. He is an amazing human who is 40 years old and he has the autism. It took me a little while to relate to me with what I'm about to say to become public about his autism. And it wasn't that I was in a shame of the diagnosis. It was at first it took me a little while to accept, right? We always, you get diagnosis, we get, you know, especially Hispanics. It's like boys are delayed. Talk, your uncle told teen, you know, your, your cousin didn't know nothing. It's a, look at him. So it took a while to accept it. Um, it was very heartbreaking. And um, the second reason why it took me a while to be open about it was because I wanted people to not just son as a kid with autism. I wanted people to see my son as Sebastian. There's so many beautiful layers about the children. And sometimes people meet them and they know the diagnosis or they know the child. It's in the way they speak, they think they're going to break. And I didn't want that for my son. And um, once I did become an advocate about it, I started One Blue Heart at a Time, the nonprofit foundation based in the Bronx. And we do amazing things in the community. Um, we... You know, I went, you know, I went, I was on the boat one day with Jimmy. Yes. From Ike of Jimmy's Cafe. And I bumped into another boat and the guy was telling me, yo, I have the kids out here. And he said, your, your son and you bring some kids out there and they go out there on the boat, jump in the water. Is it, This is a fact, huh? Right. So in the summer, the marina in the Bronx, some amazing guys out there, they have like this, this squad of just And word of mouth, they like stuff you're doing those stuff in the community let's take the early um time before it gets crazy and let's bring some kids out it all has to be sponsored by their their you know parent um mm -hmm. and we'll just ride them on the jet skis real slow they get to smell the ocean they get to hear the sensory water you know our kids love water and it was amazing they did with me like <laughs> They donated everything from the food to everything. And it was a great day. And, you know, Joe, sometimes I feel like I don't do enough because someone is always left out. Because it's such a... The Bronx is one of the, it's the number one borough with boys diagnosed, diagnosed with autism. It's the number one. Fucking Bronx is the number one of everything. Um, every <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Shit, bro. Like, it's crazy. And, it's um, crazy. But it's the number one. And then I feel like, you know, some kids got left out. Because, you know, weather. One day it rained. I only got one day out of the week. And um, it was amazing that they, um, you know, the guys who, who, who participated in this with me, they were like, these children are amazing. You know, they... Let me, let me ask you a question, Steph, right? Because we talking... Um, 
How old was your son when you when you realized he was autistic? I realized that from the age of three, I lost eye contact with Bat. Before three, he did all his milestones. So I'm one of the parents. I'm not, I, I publicly have to say this because I'm a nonprofit. I'm not telling you not to vaccinate your children. I'm not saying that teens cause autism. That is a spectrum. It's different. You never meet two kids with autism that are the same. What I am is that maybe my son was born with it, but up to the age of three, he did all his milestones. He went to the back, called, smiled. All the things he was connected. At the age of three, I lost eye contact with him, and he was, bro. When I tell you, Bash was on a brilliant, aggressive because I couldn't understand him. And you know, we live a lifestyle. Do you, you know, in the same lifestyle that, you know, we travel, we here, we like to dress up. It's the same. We like to go eat, eat with our kids. That was my first baby. I wanted to do everything when he to pop up in the mm -hmm. name. I'm like, what's up? My kid's sitting right here. Let me get some kind of arena. And I couldn't do those things. It became very difficult for him on um, these things. So from three to five, I sent him to the Republic. Could you move to another side of it? Because you sound, you, you coming in choppy, Steph. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I could. I could. I okay. hear you better. Okay. And so, so you lost eye contact with him. That's something I heard twice today. Um... I guess Joey looks at me. You know what I mean? So, um, and so you figured out something's wrong, right? Was his dad in his life at that time? Or would you? Sebastian's dad passed away when he was two. Oh, so you really alone at this. Yes. I have a great team. I have a great family. I'm never, I've not, I can never say I've been alone. I've, I've got God. And my mom and my family, great, but I didn't have the person that made him with me. Yeah, you know? and 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 so what happens is, uh, you get you this 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 happened to me ahead of time when he was born. The doctor told me, "Yo, the day he was born, it was like, yo, I got bad news to tell you. He's going to be autistic." And uh, and I just was like, "What is you know autistic?" What I mean? Did you even know what that was? No, I didn't know what it was. So it's it, it, he's been called so many things that I say autistic. You know, okay. like so Down syndrome. Uh, mm -hmm. He has some shit. The, the dudes every time they had coffee, something. Every time I went to a different doctor, they had a different thing to say. And uh, Joey's big, but to this day, uh, and so the way I've been able to live in life and deal with death, deal with real stuff is. I know it's there. I deal with it, but I can't dwell on it. And we got to keep it moving and doing what's yes. best for what's going on. Yes. And so with Joey, to this day, every single time, my father be like, damn, why he can't walk? Why he can't walk? And I'm like, so I got to keep telling my father, like, yo, that's how God made him, but we love him, and we with him, and we this, this, this. And so... um. That that's the parents are faced with a situation of why me? Why right. did this happen to Every me? Every day. You know what I say? I tell some people, and I got criticized by this, but whatever. When you put your life out there, you gotta take the good and the bad, right? I say I live with a broken heart because my son is on the spectrum. And I tell the the people that follow one blue heart at a time, you gotta say it. You gotta say how you feel because it feels so much better. And it's okay. Like, autism was not a blessing. Autism was not something. I'm living with it. I made the best of it, right? The same way you say you travel with joy and, and it's harder, right? And it's harder. Mm -hmm. It takes stuff like that. But like you said, we kept it pushing, right? I got the diagnosis at five. I couldn't make no more excuses for it. I put my big girl panties on. Dream team had just blown up. You feel me? I was all over the place. And my son couldn't even stand light without throwing himself on the floor, biting his hand because he was so overstimulated of sensory. So I stopped all of that. I didn't do Sunday fun day. We did Tuesdays. We did little things. I took him to stores that had toys that he liked to teach him, like, okay, this is why we go out to do that. Five minutes from five minutes with the 30, from 30 minutes was an hour. Now Sebastian knows the drip. 
he and TSA taking off his sneakers and all that. You know, whenever you can, let me that private jet. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what? Joey loves tennis balls. Really? Since he was a baby. And so every day, 24 hours a day, he has a tennis ball in his hand. Wow. Don't ask me why. And for his birthday, we, we, we threw him a tennis ball party one day where it was just... I don't know where my wife found these giant tennis balls. and He went crazy. Was, and, and he went crazy. He loved it, but he has it. And so is that every autistic kid that has, you know, like you know, Joey will not let this thing go. Sebastian was the little miniature action figures, like the little, like, Sonic. He likes, like, the hardest toys to find, like, Sonic and, like, um, Looney Tunes. Like, bro, this is not even popping. You know how hard it was for me to find these little things? And God forbid I lost one of those, and he couldn't find it. And even cleaning his room, like, it will be a 100 of the little action things, but let me get rid of one. And the other day, he was like, where's the dolphin? Where's the dolphin? I'm like, how does he know? You have, like, 200 things here. But I think it has something to do with texture. And, mm. and it makes them feel safe. That grip makes them feel safe. And you know how people be having, like, sometimes people use, like, the eight balls, and they move them like this for relaxation. Yeah. I feel like our children... Um, are overstimulated a lot for a lot of things, especially when they're out of their routine. And when they have something like the tennis ball that they have all the time, is a relatable of, okay, I, I think, think I'm the only one that can snatch that tennis ball out of his hand. Really? Yeah, he's with it 24 hours. He sleeps with it, wakes up. He got it. I'm the only one that can take it out of his hand. And like a minute later, he'd be like, yo, B. Like, you know, he don't talk, but he's like, you know, Yo, you know why you get my shit back. No, you know. So, so I know how old is Joey now? Can I, can I ask? Yeah, Joey's twenty seven now. So let me. There was way less programs from when Joey got diagnosed. It wasn't nothing. Like, nothing. what do you mean? Like nothing. Like nothing. Like just cool. I can't. I can't complain about the teachers were always beautiful. Mm. The schools were always nice to Joey. Um. The students, you know, because they was all the same. So I've been to, like, graduations with all the kids. I've been to all type of function. Uh, but And your career, me, your career, well, also, you were busy, busy. Yeah, so my moms and pops, I had Joey when I was 18, 19. Yeah. So my moms and pops really raised, raised, raised Joey to mm -hmm. allow me to go out there and do my thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so if it wasn't for them... It wouldn't have been no Fat Joe the rapper, cause you know we don't leave hours behind. We just, yeah. I, I'm just not like I'm not built like that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. I'm not built like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So the day that my moms and pops, unfortunately, whatever, then you'll see Joe with me every single day wherever I'm at because we don't leave our kids behind. That's just we don't do that. You know we just can't. And you know, um, Joy, I wanted you said something with the other mom that was on. You said something about when they when they aged out of high school is like people forget that they they still alive, right? They still need a routine. They still need something. And when you say that, I worry because you know Bash just turned fourteen in October. I worry about that. Like, what's gonna happen to him when he's? No, in that's a serious problem. Because it's what happens is, at huge least he problem. got school, at least he's with the kids, he got love, you know, um, but once it's over, I took my son, and I don't want to mention names, like to the biggest time of programs you could take here in Florida, and they always dirty. They always mm -hmm. dirty. It look like somewhere you, you'll leave. You, we have, New York has better facilities than New Jersey. They do. Well, well Miami, I think so. I yeah, think they so do. Because and then uh, there's one, I believe, um, wh what's my man? I, I think Dan Marino has a whole school for special kids. Really? Here. Fancy, fancy school, like like computers, this, that, this. And he was like, yo, Joe, bring your son. But when I came, my son's nonverbal. He does you know, he take care of Joe. He, he, he wasn't advanced enough to go because they, they're, they're developing autistic kids, which is dope. For like the future and jobs and stuff like that, huh? They didn't even have an elevator in the school, and he and 
He got the wheelchair, but I love what he did because he has an autistic kid, what he did uh, for the kids, but it was for more advanced. Because, you know, every case is different. Every child is different. Yes, yes. Every child is different. You can every tell me something is with your son, something's different with Joey, something's different with everything. They never the same. I have a homegirl that her daughter speaks fluent Japanese. She taught herself fluent Japanese but will only eat one brand of french fries. She cannot consume another food. She can she can take it in her mouth. But she, she just eats so french Japanese. fries? Just, and it has to be the same brand. Tell me about, because I got to get to one more parent. Tell me about your program, your non-for-profit, where people could donate or find out about your, your, your program so, and what you do for the kids. So my nonprofit is pretty awesome now because it's just mine, but it is. And I'm very one-on-one -on -one with my parents, right? There's a lot of my moms here right now and dads. And what I did during the pandemic, I usually do like a big event, but because of the pandemic, I started lives. And we would cry on the lives. The kids were regressing. They weren't getting their services. People couldn't afford it. Medicaid wasn't answering. Nothing was happening. And all we had was each other. And what and advices of what we've been through to give to each other. So this year, I decided to, I could have done a small event this year, but I decided not to. I decided to go crazy on my lives. So on April 2nd, which is April Autism Day, I gave away six um, swimming scholarships to the only swimming program in the Bronx, yes, the only one. Can you believe that? Just one. It's called Reach Academy, and it's not government-owned, private. And I donated six scholarships, and they matched me with another six. And I have Nate the Great. His mom um, donated um, Gabby's son. His mom donated iPads for me to give. And a lot of my friends, you could buy shirts at onebluehearteratatime.com. They're limited edition, and all the proceeds Go for that, for iPads, um, maybe another six scholarships at the end of the month. And it's amazing because I really feel that swimming saved my life with Sebastian. Wow, you know, Joey swims too. He swimmed all his life, but you know, even out here. Uh, what I was going to say is Ruben Diaz told me about uh, a park that they just completed in the Bronx. I don't know if you know about this. This is for autism, autistic kids, censor... Sensor yes, thing. I heard about that, and I was going to send you a text as soon as I got back, because I'm still in the Dominican Republic, and what I wanted to ask you was to help me get a permit for one day in the summer so I could do a sensory-friendly carnival. Don't laugh, Joey. You know I'll be having these no, ideas. No, I'll tell them. I'll, I'll tell them, but everybody thinks, yo, I'm not Ruben Diaz, but I one million percent, I'm going to talk to him for you. One million Please. percent. I think it's only right. It's only right. Um, and I want to get a permit for that. I heard about, I was going to even do the park on Dykeman. It don't, it don't matter to me, but I want a permit so I could do an autism friendly carnival. All right. All before right. I'll the end of the summer. It. So I, let's talk about it. Thank you for inviting one. I will. God time. bless. You always jump one in our lives. Heart. One blue heart. Y'all already know what it is. Look into that. I got one more parent. God all bless. Right. All right. Love you, Joe. Good all night. Bye-bye. Right, so that's one blue heart at a time. And so what goes on is when you got kids in the spectrum, you got autistic kids, you communicate with each other. And so people talk about their, 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 their needs and awareness and how we can better the lives of our kids and our family members. Um, and so... Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not Ruben Diaz, but yeah, yeah, I'm not. I just, he's one of my best friends, and everybody thinks, you know, I can just make the borough president do whatever. I cannot uh, make the man do it, but I will talk to him because she's real and she's out there for the kids in the community. And, 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 and that's what this is about, bro. This ain't about nothing else. Uh, I don't think you could cl clout chase uh, autism. I think this is the only thing you can't clout. Like, this ain't, like, this is real shit. People with needs, family members with needs. Video music box on the check-in. 
Uncle Ralph, I tell you, I'll be up there next week. Let's go eat some lunch or something. I love you. Was it for you, I wouldn't be here. Your puzzle life, I'm requesting. Let me do it again. He was in all the comments and all that. And he he got to pick up the request. And so, what's up, my brother? Salute, brother. Salute, salute, salute to you, man. Yo, listen, man. I have you been? Li I know you've been listening to everything we've been talking. The whole about. show, brother. The whole show. I want to say something too to you. I Thanks. commend you for sharing your story, Joe, because that you got the diagnosis at the age of eighteen, a teenager. No social media, no nothing. So I commend you for sharing that story because the world didn't know that you were so young when this hit you. So um, I commend you for sharing that part of your story, brother. Yeah, man. It's really, um, it's real. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for my moms and pops, you know, uh, I mean, same out outcome. You know, Joey would be with me every day, but it wouldn't have been no Fat Joe the Rapper. It wouldn't have been, you know, they really, 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 really helped me so much with Joey. And I just think family is a major, major key to this. Tell us your story, man. Where you from? But this is one person Ruben Diaz Jr. did introduce me to. He's like, yo, Joe, he, every time I'm with him, he's like, yo, Joe, you got to meet my man. He, his kid is autistic. He's always fighting for them. You know, so tell him, tell, tell him your organization and, and how do you fit into this? My name is Caillou from PuzzleLife.Voice. My wife and I go hard for our princess, Courtney. She was diagnosed at the age of two, and she's 10 now. And I rep you know, I live right here in the South Bronx. I live in the Bronx. I'm right here in the Bronx, Joe. Mm -hmm. And um, big shout out to Ruben Diaz, and big shout out to Jimmy from Jimmy's Cafe. He's always shown love for my family and my daughter from day one. He has the flies in there, and that's where the meeting happened. So um, this don't happen without Jimmy and um, Ruben. But um, me and my wife's story started is basically at the end of the day when my daughter got diagnosed, like every other parent, I didn't know how to deal with it. Um, I was living with any doctor that sat across from me. And I always share this on my live. I go live with my brother Snipe Life every Thursday, another autism warrior, Snipe Life from Yonkers, D Block. I told, I sh it's not easy to share our children's journey. Mm -hmm. And I can see that with you when you were sharing Joey's story. It's not easy to share, but me and my wife took the initiative to have the conversation and to share the journey because how do you get understanding and acceptance unless you have them around what we're going through? Because this journey is never going to be easy. But if you want change, it comes with uncomfortability. And we're going to be comfortable every day. If you're an autism parent, an autism warrior, you're uncomfortable every day because you don't know what the unknown is. There's so many unknowns. And my thing in the Bronx, I just felt, I love the Bronx, but I felt the Bronx dropped the ball in so many areas. Like Sis just said, it went on. How is there only one program with swimming lessons for our kids in the Bronx? Our kids are infatuated with water, right? It should be swimming lessons. Mm. COVID-19 has snatched the number one thing from our kids, routine. Our kids are so routinish. You see, you said Joey with the tennis ball. You can't see one picture on Puzzle Life Dog Voice without my daughter with a little stuffed animal dog on her side. I don't know what type of comfort it gives her. But All right, so wait, let me ask you something. What is that, man? Because my whole life, Joey, we, we got about 100 tennis balls with the shit. He can hold it in his hand. We've had that our whole life. And I didn't know that all the kids do this. They all, just like you said, if you met one, you met one. But each individual child has something that's like their protection, like their kryptonite. You feel what I'm saying? Something that's, I need this. Like with my daughter, she can't walk out the door without one of her stuffed animal dogs. And for the past five years, it's been the brown dog. She'll just say brown dog, right? And that was her first word. Um, we was told our daughter would be mute. Shame on the first doctor because... Unfortunately, depending on your insurance, depending on the color of your skin, I'm married to a beautiful Latino queen, and we wasn't given hope from the beginning. When we knew something was wrong, and I, that's a different conversation, I don't really mess with vaccines. I'm not telling anybody not to mess with vaccines, but there was a, a total shift 
and our daughter after the age of two in our first vaccines. And, you know, that's just something to with. I felt like if I knew more about what was in the vaccines, I could have stopped something. So I felt a lot of the redirect, because I felt like they reprogrammed, my, they reprogrammed my baby's brain. We all got of what we think caused it or where it comes from, because the first thing they tell us, they don't know where it comes from. Mm -hmm. But you got so many medicines for it, a.k.a. steroids, because that's what it is. They still trying to figure it out. Let me ask you a question. How come they never know where it comes from? For real, though. Like, I don't want to get conspiracy or nothing, but I've never, to this day, heard the true reason why Joey is the way he is. It, it's never been an answer. Uh, um, I mean, I mean they, we, we just don't know. My thing is, you already know when we're talking about, and we like I said, we ain't going to get political with it. Yeah. But when you talk about medicine and big business, I'm pretty sure they have some type of clue or form of, they know where everything comes from. They know, but autism is big business. In April, the world shines the light, Joe, right? And say go blue for our kids. But you and I, all the warriors on this platform, we go blue every day. We live this every day, right? In May, they're going to try to cut the lights off on autism. But we cut them right back on. We live this every day. And that's why I don't like, as parents, as advocates, we have to use the word fight for services. We fight literally for services. Because what you said made sense. They love them when they're little. They love them when they're little, right? They get to the age of 16, start becoming young kings and queens. They get forgotten now. That's right. Because you can't tell me in the Bronx, there's not workshops in every public school, right? No, there's not the Bronx anywhere. I'm, I'm here in Miami, they ain't got it. And, and my thing is why, why, uh, why we don't have the necessary access that we need to survive with our children. I seen much respect for you tuning into my live today. I spoke about, I tried to do reform and change in the police academy. They're not trained or equipped to deal with our special needs kids. They can't say freeze or shine a light in our kid's face or kick down the door and we got our special needs kids there and think that our special needs kids is going to follow something they call protocol. Come on now. Who they fooling with that? And there's too many stories going on when you seeing so many unfortunate deaths. You know, let's keep this totally positive. But you know, just to add to what you're saying, right, uh, I remember the young kid that went to the store and he had the headphones on and the cops shot him and they killed him. He definitely was autistic. I don't know him. I don't know, but being a parent, when I seen that, I said to myself, this kid was probably autistic. Something didn't communicate with them, right? And he died for that. And and uh and there's another uh form of uh police. City officials, anybody who has autistic family members or kids, um, you look great. Anybody who has autistic family members, you should speak up behind the scenes once again to, to everybody that works with you and be like, hey, you know, and we should have something for that. Like, you know, um, because, you know, so anything could tick them off. I told them that one day Joey just flipped out because they was changing his medicine and uh, he was catching seizures, and um, and they put him in like a place for like two days. They Baker Act him here in Florida, him. and Joey never been alone his whole life. Like, I mean, never. And so we was there six in the morning, ten in the um, at night, and they finally was like, "Yo, fuck, man, they, these people want this kid. Like, you know, like give him the kid. Like, they, <laughs> you know." These ain't the ones trying to leave them. They, they, they want this kid, right? And and the problem is so they don't know how to communicate and certain things flip them out. And so that's a scary thing, especially the older they get. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, tell me about your daughter, your program. What do you try to do uh, for the kids and how you try to better uh, the spectrum? Well, me and my wife, Courtney's, like I said, Courtney's 10 years old now. And what we did 
Well, PuzzleLife.Voice, a.k.a. Big shout out to my brother, Calvin. Put up your dupes. You see the gloves? I don't know if you got a chance to see the gloves, Joey. Let's go. Come on now. I got to sing some. We Let's got the go. first. We got the um, Killer Mel, a.k.a. Killer Mel, woman champion. She fights in the ring with this. Team Vasquez was the first boxer to fight fully wearing autism awareness, representing his daughter. So, my brother, put up your dupes, partner up with us. We got knock the stigma out of autism because it's such a stigma, right? And we, we, my wife and I, we did Puzzle Wear Dot Voice because it starts the conversation everywhere you go. You see me wearing this, it should be a conversation hat, especially in our community. One out of every 56 people, one out of every 59 is diagnosed with special needs or on the spectrum, right, or with a disability. That means it's in your community. That means whether you live it or not, you're going to walk past it. So why not have the conversation and get educated on it? So that's what Puzzle Like Our Voice is about. We're going to be in your face every day. We go to the street corners. I'm on the corners with the youngins. You got to remember, I didn't come from a home where my family was educated and had the conversation with me. So I get it when I go outside to the youth and they really don't have the information. So you can't be mad with the youth of them not really getting it because this wasn't a conversation happening in every household. So when Puzzle Life Got Voice, is a conversation that happens every day in your face. We go to every store and have the conversation. Jenny was the first store that we went and had the conversation with to make sure that our kids are accepted, which means our kids got to have a meltdown in any given moment. That don't mean you should brush it out of your restaurant, out of your clothing store, out of your supermarket. Let's have a fast track. Sit us down quicker. Get us to uh, a fast lane and get us our merchandise quicker. You know what I mean? Things like that. That's what the whole organization is having, making people understand you don't have to live this journey to make a better tomorrow for us. And the biggest thing I say, Joe, and I think you can relate to it, once people hear the word or get the diagnosis, they forget about the capabilities. Focus mm. less on the disabilities and more on the capabilities. Mm. Mm. That's important. And the thing with Joey, right, I knew I was doing this. It took a long time. Really not. I would have talked, if I was you, I'd have talked about Joey way earlier. Me, because gangster rap, battling dudes, all this type of shit. You know, people don't give a fuck. They'll dish your kid. They'll, they'll, you know. So I try to keep them as private as as possible, you know, because, because I'm a rapper and I'm getting this shit or whatever the case may be. Doesn't mean Joey got to go through that. Fact. You know what I mean? And so I'm older now. I'm the OG. Uh, and I just feel like, you know, we should talk about this. And when, when I was going to do this today, I said to myself, and I know that the pulse of the world, this is something that's going to go on today, tomorrow, forever. I know what's, where the heart of hip hop is at right now is with DMX. So if I wouldn't, if I didn't automatically plan to do this show, it would have been all about DMX because I was gone for a week. But Respect. just Respect. know we have to talk about this. And so I thought about it. I said, well, you know what? What does Joey love the most? And believe it or not, Joey loves being around people the most. Joey just loves smiling at people, getting on FaceTime. He see Uncle Rich. I'm talking to him. He be like, yeah, like. He want to get on. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, you know, if I FaceTime with Rich Play, I FaceTime uh, with my brother Rich the Barber, whoever, he's like, yo, he's it, he's it. And so Joey loves people, you know, and even though he's autistic, and he's a little bit different, he loves people. Um, God bless him, man. God bless him. And what does your daughter love the most? Well, right now, we're so crazy. My daughter loves music. Besides the dog, forget it, you can't touch it, but my daughter loves music. Right now, one of her meltdowns, one of the songs we go to is Rock With You, Rest In Peace, Michael Jackson. And Hector Lavoe, Hector Lavoe's, um, I don't, can't pronounce the song, but the thing about music, El Clante, she is the percussions and the drums to where she'll just tune out, head like this, eyes like this, and it just, she'll just go into a different transformation. So it's something about music, and that's why I say um, these programs are important to have to give our kids a chance to show what they are capable of. Because like I said, in the Bronx, 
Ain't that many places. Ain't nowhere to go. I ain't going to say you ain't too many. Ain't too many places to go, Joe. And you did one thing that me and my brother Snipe Life talk about a lot. Because I go live every Thursday. I've been doing this for eight years as far as advocating for it. Right? Eight years. Right? But a lot of people, like I said, sometimes they got to hear it from another voice. You know how this world is designed. Right? I commend you for having the audience you have, the platform you have. And like you said, rest in peace to DMX and his family. You took the time out. Yeah, but I don't know rest in peace to DMX. I, see DMX people those messages. I don't know if those messages are real, so I'll take that back. Yeah, you took the time out to talk autism acceptance today, right? Right? You're an advocate. You took the time out to talk to three different parents today. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. So I commend you for doing that because I always preach about how social media has a big impact on the youth and on a lot of adults itself. So you know how cool it is for the youth that look at you now? Now they're going to take five steps back and say, damn, maybe I can really figure out what, you know, being a warrior, what it is being a warrior. But, you know, maybe I can take the time out and, and get with this thing about autism acceptance and join the conversation. And so, and so the, I think the, the gem I took from you, and I always take gems uh, from people, um, is what they're capable of. Not what their disability is, but let's, let, let's, let's test their capabilities Thanks. to the max. And you know what's crazy is I have a, a cousin, but she's more like an aunt. Her name's Elizabeth. And one day I was with her and we were sitting there and she told me, she said, uh, Lizzie, Lizzie said, you know, he's overachieved, Joey. And I said, I said, I said, what do you mean? She said, you know, this guy, you know, we was having dinner. She's looking, she's like, look at him. He's calm. He smiles. He's, he's overachieved. Like, He's done more than we even expected or gave him credit for. Listen. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. And, and I looked at her, and from that day, I realized, like, yes, like, you know, this kid been through a lot, but he's still here. He still smiles. He's still focused. He's still, you know, and he did. He overachieved. You know, and I want you to take this with you and remember this. Mm -hmm. Our kids are the purest kids in the world. I say that to say this. Our kids don't wake up with that thing called agenda. None of our special needs kids or those on the spectrum have agendas. They just want to love. So that's why, you know, I get a little upset when I see society rejects them. Or when you say the facilities that's supposed to be clean is not clean for them. Our kids are the most genuine human beings in the world. I mm. became a better person because of Courtney. Mm. I've learned patience. Because of Courtney, you can't survive this journey without patience. You can't survive this journey without love, man. So shout out to our kids, the most genuine hum human beings in the world, man. They don't wake up with an agenda. They don't wake up to say, I don't like you. I don't like him. I ain't feeling that. They, that's not how they wired. Mm. Mm. Great thing said. My brother, how could they find out your, your, your organization, uh, your program, uh, Please, they can man. donate, they can support. Tell them how. Follow us here on PuzzleLife.Voice PG, Puzzle PG2 on Instagram. PuzzleLife.Voice PG2 on Instagram, on Facebook. And once again, um, all it takes is having the conversation that can lead to understanding, that can hopefully equal acceptance. That's all we're asking for. And brother, thank you for this conversation. And big shout out, I don't know if you've seen it, Hall of Famer Ed Reed, you know who Ed Reed is one of the best. Yeah, Hall of yeah, Famer yeah. Ed Reed, and I'm gonna challenge you right now. They they wanted me to do this. We got something called I don't know if you seen Ruben Diaz do it with my daughter yesterday, Joe. We nah. got a challenge called the hashtag. If you get a chance, it's hashtag Walking in Play for Autism. Ed Reed got 87, 20. Everybody's been doing it. All you doing for 30 seconds is walking in place, jogging in place, whatever you doing for 30 seconds, using that hashtag and challenging somebody else. And what you're doing with that, we're just celebrating our loved ones, man, because we wasn't able to do the walk last year and this year, so we just walking in place for autism. 
I got you, my brother. Nothing but love and respect, man. God bless you and your wife and your daughter. Thank you, man. Peace, my brother. One. And so there you have it. Passionate, advocate, father, caring about the others in the communities. And you got to have these conversations. You know, when I was a kid, uh, we had a cousin, Cisa, and she was, you know, special needs, but we always loved Cisa. I said, I knew something was wrong when I was a kid, but I, you know. And, uh, and so this has been going on forever. This ain't new kids with Down syndrome or kids autistic or people nonverbal. This has been going on forever. And what we got to do is love them and be vocal for them. And like you said, walking in line for 30 seconds just to celebrate them and acknowledge them. And uh, in a strange way, you know, whenever I see special needs or autistic kids or people, I always like to let them know that I see them. You know, I always like to let them know I see you. You know, even if their parents, sometimes they, they had a rough day. They don't really give a fuck. They don't know I'm Fat Joe. They don't know nothing. But I, I get out the way to just be like, hey, what's up, man? Yo, what's going on, mama? What's going on? Just to let the kids know, I see you. You're not in the world by yourself. We with you. Um, Listen, guys, uh, thank you. I know this was real talk. This wasn't van talk. This wasn't hip hop one on one, but uh, it was something that was needed, something we really, really had to talk about because a lot of people are affected by it. A lot of people are scared to talk about this. And so it's important that I said, you know what? Let me talk about this and uh, bring some parents on here who really live in it. Because if you have a family member or you have, this is all of us together. This ain't just the person who's autistic or special needs. It's a family thing. And all you families out there recognize all we really have is family. So if you haven't been instrumental in your autistic person or the kid in the spectrum or the person in the spectrum, try your best, as hard as it is, to try to understand, to try to support, or at least support your family member that really is fighting who really is thugging it out. If you got an aunt, if you got a sister, you know, support them because they need it, man. It's tough. It's hospital appointments, it's school appointments, it's this, it's that. Pretty much your life is totally different when you have an autistic kid. And so maybe if, 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 if you're not, you know, patient enough to deal with it personally, support your family member that has to deal with it. And it's all about inclusion, y'all. Uh, we the biggest in the game. Um, nobody bigger. Tomorrow, I'll come back. I've been seeing a lot of recipes, DMX. I hope that's a lie. Um, I'm still praying for DMX. Everybody prayers up. I do not know. Uh, you know, I, I hope it's a lie and people cloud chasing because people cloud chase anything. But, um, Peace, y'all. See y'all tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Uh, we'll go into DMX, and we'll really uh, talk about, you know, DMX and his contribution and what he means to hip-hop, what he means to the rap world, uh, how much we love him, um, how many times he prayed for us. And so you see this sometimes, you're like, damn, in the middle of a concert, gangster rap concert, and he start praying for everybody. And so, you know, shout out to DMX, man, and for praying for us and thinking about us when we wasn't even thinking about it, man. And his family, he got a lot of kids, you know, Swiss Beats, D, Wilder, Rough Riders, man. This has been big, 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 big friends to me for many years. The Locks, you know, the whole Wild, the whole Yonkers. I loved it, man. I loved it. Uh, the other day when everybody came together, shout out to Tretch and Erica Ford was out there. Shout out my brother Rock McDaniel's video music box and everybody went outside of the hospital. And sometimes, you know, I'm not saying nothing about no hospital, but I believe sometimes when we form Voltron like that, 
we let the doctors know, maybe if you could try a little bit more because we love that guy there. You know, maybe they need to know we love that guy. And I love y'all for being out there like that. You know, uh, and shout out to all the parents, autistic kids, brothers and sisters. I know it's tough. And we, from the hood, you know, the hood can be harsh. Young kids and the hood could be harsh. So if your brother or sister's autistic and they try to snap on them and all that, never be ashamed. Never be ashamed of your family member, of your brother or your sister. I know it can be hard. You know what I mean? The hood, we got terrible jokes. But, you know, never be ashamed of yours. Peace.